I don't know if this is the first official broadcast, but it's starting soon. But this is about the early access, right? Information, and let's see so, what else we're gonna talk about. Just what are we facing here? A relic of the old world. Oh, Ready new, your new trailer? We will only get one chance. And remember, How's the sound, guys? The whispers, call for help. Do not attack. When you hear the whispers, the graphics look good. What do you think he was on about? It's Dolman. Is this gonna be an in-game cutscene? Yeah. Then Dolman. Shut your damn mouth. Ugh, why do I always get stuck with these rookies? <laughs> hey, the kid's got a mean cleave. Give him a chance. Quiet. Hmm? Oh. Good. Okay. I jumped a little bit. <laughs> Just did a little. Cleave, eh, Captain? <laughs> Rookie can't even lift his own sword. Captain Oren? Captain? Oh, damn. Got decimated. It's here. Rain! Send the signal! <laughs> what the fuck? Rain! Oh. On my back. Come on, come on. I'm ready. I'm ready. What do you say? Um, is that a lich? It, it, it's a man. No, no. necromancer. It's not. Oh, she did. Oh, it's like a rave or something. A shade? Oh, what? Oh, it's an illusion. Is that an orb? Like a uh, one of those feet. orb stuff? Sir, the, the captain, I. You'll be fine. Here. Is he gonna attack him in the face? Oh my god, it is. It's a. Uh, what is this? So it did kind of attack him in the face, or his, at least his whole body. Stop. Mortal. It can still be contained. You don't know what you have unleashed. Your kind no longer control this world. We cannot destroy your body, it's true. But you will watch. Coming out uh, on the 6th, early access. Bind him! Feed. Is it still feeding? Oh, my child. Wait, how, how did sure they move it without it eating you? Yeah, y'all get a gift for yourself. Early access. Damn, it's like the Zergling. You know, they, they have to creep. That grows. That's crazy. So that's what that stuff is. 
that's coming out of the of the title screen. <laughs> the tentacles. It's not free for early access. If you want to wait for the Hi, free one, you have to wait I'm for Jonathan the actual Rogers, release. Game director on Path of Exile 2. Now, Path of Exile 2 is going into early access in around yeah. two weeks on December the 6th. But even though it's early access, this isn't just some small taste. The game is huge. In this live stream, Ooh. we're going to be introducing everything you can expect. So without further ado, let's roll the gameplay trailer. Oh, there's a gameplay Existence trailer too, man. Huh? is a thing of beauty. Precious, but impermanent. Life and death are mortal enemies and yet bound to one another. The continuation of life must be protected at all costs. So many sacrificial altars, man. Some have said, my methods are brutal. To this, I say, there can be no salvation without sacrifice. Damn, too many sacrificial altars. The monk. The mage. That was the archer earlier, right? Was barbarian or something. That Templar? Yeah. You got more exiles now. Yeah, I need to like free stream. Because after this, I'm going back to work. I want to do the punching. So I feel like monks will have to use the border staff for range, and then when you get close combat, it's punching. Kind of thing. What's this? Is that like the Atlas stuff? Like in a hammer? Can you run hammer on Necromancer? A Necro face style? Or so they have all the regular family exile stuff. Which which part? The the maps looking thing? Those who obsess with death. Yeah. Let it could be it could be another progression new system. With it. I haven't really played Path of Exile that much. Now as you just saw. Even in early access, Path of Exile 2 is a big game. It's actually been five years since we announced PoE 2, and over that time we've revealed a lot, but it's been in bits and pieces. It's pretty hard to keep track of it all, so today we're going to do a full rundown of all the content that will be available at the start of early access. Classes, character progression systems, you and for the first time, you can see the blue a full screen overview of the <laughs> end game. This is going to be a big one, so get comfortable. For 20 years, Rayclast has been free from any sources of corruption. But the Count of Ogham, tempted by promises of power, intends to harness it once more. Maybe I the should play regular Path of Exile. Monsters are mutating, and madness is spreading. But then girl, girl from near, from Under line the dark though. influence of corruption, the Count doles out sentences of death to any who would question him. So it's going to be the same launching stream still, but there's more people. There's more characters on there. You can and choose this from. is where you find yourself at the start of PoE 2. Explore the dark forests of Ogham. Traverse the barren plain. Oh. What happened? Plains of the Vasteri Desert. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to be behind now. Delve oh no, into the jungle we're going ruins on. of Utsal, an ancient Val city. There are challenges. It's not just me. Changing monsters, hidden rooms, lost camps and treasures, roaming merchants, and of course, you need I'm comparing bosses. my stream to Lady's no Dream, areas the just same. to be sure. Yeah. It falls to you to track down the seed of corruption. <laughs> it's lagging. The source of all this devastation. <laughs> their, stream, their stream is lagging. On the way, you'll face fearsome monsters, meet strange characters, forge unlikely bonds. It's not me, I swear, it's not me. But first, you'll need to pick a class. Oh my god, they re they've really got to re-upload this. Now, Early this. Access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. 
The Monk is a fast and furious melee fighter. He I dashes see this. in and out of combat, and his mechanics involve building up and keeping momentum. Yeah. Like all classes in PS2, like they want to like use a wide variety of skills to mix and match different combos. Oh my god, why is it lagging? To get <laughs> Wait, hold on, I want to, to re-chat, hold on. To get new skills, you will first need to find skill gems. Using a skill awesome. gem will yeah. open the gem cutting menu, which shows all the active skills available in PoE2. You can choose wait, wait, wait. an existence. Technical difficulties? <laughs> Yeah, it's somehow lagging. Oh my god, the whole thing is like I think it's their computer that they're streaming from. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I feel like it's your own computer. Oh boy. A lot of prime subs. Yeah. They keep they keep popping up. Oh my god. I think it's like do they have alerts on? And it's lagging their whole PC? <laughs> Holy moly. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy, man. We have Twitch drops on too at the same time. I mean, they want to support their channel, I guess. We can Twitch drop, which is the hand that I posted in my uh, ARP channel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this Twitch drop thing while we're waiting. Hold on. Any channel Path of Exile directory for 45 minutes. Wait, not Path of, Path of Exile two. Uh, I don't know to be honest. I have drops enabled, so I don't know. Do you guys get any drops? Yo, stream delayed. So December, uh, December 6th. Just kidding. Dude, I swear, I swear it's because they have alerts on or something. The OBS crashing because of all the subs. Sir, just what are we facing here? Oh, oh, it's back. Precious. Those who power oh, they're, 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 they're re, they rewind it. There are 21 active skills for quarter staves. Okay. So this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By end game, you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing where you find yourself at the start okay. of PoE 2. Explore they re, the dark they reverted that. Of Traverse the barren plains of the okay, Vesteri cool. Desert and delve into the jungle ruins of Utsal, an ancient Val city. I like how they pre recorded everything. Challenging so they monsters, back. hidden rooms, lost camps, and treasures. Hidden rooms, man. Roaming I gotta do. I'm gonna try to do my best course, to document everything and the areas are the same. <laughs> it falls to you to track down the seed of corruption, the source of all this devastation. Ooh. On the way, you'll face fearsome monsters, meet strange characters, forge unlikely bonds, and uncover lost civilizations. But Are first, you'll need to pick a class. This is our booba. <laughs> now, early access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. The monk is a fast and furious melee fighter. He dashes in and out of combat, and his yeah. mechanics involve building up and keeping momentum. Like all classes in PoE2, you'll want to use you a wide bell, variety too. of skills to mix and match different combos. Oh, every time you attack with the belt down, it, it skills, uh, you'll the first need to find skill gems. Using a skill gem will open the gem cutting menu, Falling which shows all the killing active palm. skills That's available in PoE2. You can choose an existing skill to level up, the or choose to engrave a new one. Since this is a level 7 skill gem, even if you pick a new skill, it will immediately be level 7, so there's no harm in trying out something new. Nice. The monk primarily uses the quarter stuff. There are three schools of martial arts, lightning, ice, and wind. wind. But don't think you have to stick to just one. The best combos are going to involve mixing elements of all three. Let's try killing palm. Like many so monk skills, this can be used to quickly take advantage of a specific situation. If there's an enemy on low life, you can use Killing Palm to dash to them and kill them instantly. Okay, so it's mostly using quarter staff to do then we can use a different skill the majority, to and then the palm is always to finish it off. Attack. 
Okay. The monk also has powerful combo skills. Tempest Bell, for example, is a skill that places a giant resonating bell. Hitting the bell causes it to ring, dealing damage to all enemies around it. You can also do things like freeze or shock the bell, which will add elemental damage to the strikes. Nice. The monk also has a variety of abilities to empower his staff. If an enemy is close to being stunned, you can use Staggering Palm to punch them down. After that, any attack you do will shoot out wind projectiles. Damn. So you put the palm first. There so you are can... 21 active skills for quarter staves. So this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By end game, you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing projectiles and obliterating cool. screens that. of enemies with yeah. huge combo attacks. Now, if you like a style of melee that's a little slower but hits much harder, then the warrior is for you. He pounds warrior. the ground with big chunky attacks and can shrug off the hits of small enemies. That's gonna seem like a temple armor with a shield. Even though the mace slams are slow, you never lose control. Longer attacks can be retargeted as you go. And if you find yourself committed to a long attack, you can dodge roll out of it at any time. Nice. Among the skill option for maces, you will find a variety of slams, fire attacks, war cries, and shield skills. Here, I'm going to slam the ground, bringing it apart with lines of fire. Any slam skill will then cause these fissures to erupt with lava. I can even run through them with a skill like Stampede to do huge amounts of damage. Why am I getting no location for this? The warrior can also use war cries, <laughs> which can empower your next skill. Seismic Cry, for example, will double any slams from the next attack. The Stampede counts as a slam, so I can double that for even more craziness. Damn. All the slams, man. If you want to go a little faster and be a little more defensive, equip a shield. In Peewee 2, you can raise your shield at any time to block all damage from the front, even spells. While holding up your shield, your stun meter will build as you take damage. So be careful. If it reaches 100%, your stance will break and you oh. will be vulnerable. Ooh. Some enemies also have unblockable attacks, which are indicated by this red flash. Oh, if you see damn. one of these coming, make sure to dodge out of the way. Using a shield also gives you access to shield just, skills, like just shield charge, Careful. which allows you to charge towards enemies. Oh, you can stumble. put a wall. You can make a wall While charging, your shield. you're also blocking the whole time, so you have full damage immunity from the front. Shield the warrior charge. also has access to totems. Some totems have built-in abilities, like Shockwave Totem, I which can be placed to stun melee like enemies and trigger aftershocks like those from the Earthquake. But you can also get Ancestral Warrior Totems, which allow you to use any slam skill in your repertoire. This is a meta skill, which means that it's a skill you can put other skills into. What? I can take a slam like Sunder and socket oh, it into damn, my so Ancestral Warrior can do Totem. Slams? Now when I summon him, he'll sit there and slam the monsters from a distance. It summons a soul. There are 20 you. active skills for maces, so there's a lot more to try out. But by end game, you're going to be dropping hammers from the sky, leaping fearlessly into combat, and separating the very earth you stand on. Damn, look at all the Time slams. Time for some ranged attacks. The ranger is primarily about the bow, but we wanted to make sure that she feels agile as well. In Peewee 2, you can shoot while moving. Combined with all the skills nice. the ranger has that allow you to jump around, you'll have a lot of mobility in combat. Bow skills have a variety of lightning, poison, ice, and physical attacks. Lightning attacks bounce around between targets. You can oh, also stick lightning. lightning arrows in the ground which explode when hit by the bounces, or electrocute enemies to take them out of combat. Ice attacks allow you to slow and freeze enemies to keep them away from you. Oh, Using they get poison, chilled and then you hit them again. Enemies from afar, but also grow some interesting plants. Arrows. Yo, you With 21 Usa. bow skills and all the mobility <laughs> and combo tools the ranger has, you can take advantage of every situation. By end game, you'll be creating hundreds of arrows, be they falling from the sky, bouncing around between enemies, or spraying out of tornadoes. You might have noticed in the bottom left of the screen that the flask slots look a little different. In Peewee 2, you have one dedicated life flask slot and one mana flask slot. Flasks gain charges as you kill enemies, and typically allow you to heal six or seven uh, times nice. if they're full. But that's not the only thing you can use charges for. Charms are a new item type that will automatically defend you from various debuffs or damage types. Wait, it is from Diablo 2. Having trouble with getting frozen? Equip a Thoring Charm. When it's fully charged, oh, but you have to equip it. Never mind. That's the inventory thing. If you get frozen. <laughs> to recharge them, just kill more monsters. You can gain more slots for charms by upgrading your belt. Uh, so instead of belt being potions, a crossbow that can be loaded with different potion types, capacity is now charm capacity. All nice. classes in Path of Exile 2 can be controlled with WASD, which makes this class play exactly like a shooter. For the crossbow, you will find skills that work like shotguns, 
sniper rifles, assault rifles, and even grenade launchers. Damn, you were... Not only that, you there are a wide variety of more interesting elemental ammos too. It's FPS. very fast to switch between ammo types, as long as you already have them loaded, which makes the mercenary able to combo abilities together for devastating effect. Use Glacial Bolt to create walls of ice to separate enemies, then switch to Fragmentation Rounds to explode the ice, dealing massive Captain. AoE damage. If I come across an armored enemy, I could use Armor Piercing Rounds to break their armor, and then High Velocity Rounds to take them down. Or perhaps I could fire a gas grenade to poison enemies Damn, before detonating okay. the cloud with an explosive shot for massive damage. If you want to call in some suppressing fire, you can summon artillery ballistas. These have a minimum range, so you'll want to prepare your position carefully before moving in. Hey, what class is this? It's not a ranger, right? This is a... There are 22 active skills for crossbows. Crossbows? In -game, you'll be calling oh, just a weapon down type from the sky in as general. You litter the battlefield with grenades and pepper your enemies with your automatic shotgun. If you're looking to take a back seat and let your minions do the work, then the oh. witch should be your choice. There she you can go, Yeah, hordes your, of undead monsters your necro. to fight for her while casting powerful cast necro spells style right that here. The witch. Enemies. Occult skills are some of the most varied in the game, with skeletons, noxious spells, specialty minions, curses, and sacrificial magic. Before we talk about minions, minions. we'll have to talk about a new resource in Path of Exile 2 called Spirit. This is a spirit gem, which allows you to pick from a range of persistent skills. All classes have a variety of these skills which can add some very interesting effects. Oh, this like spirit Arctic skills? Armor which does cold damage to enemies that hit you, or Raging Spirits which summon fiery skulls each time you cast a fire spell. For the Witch though, we'll want to be using our spirit to create permanent minions. These permanent minions will be minions. revived automatically when they die, so you don't have to worry about resummoning them all the time. Well, okay. Here I'm using the skill screen to allocate which minions I would like in my horde. You can see the spirit cost of each one. Skeletal uh, warriors are cheap, but weak. Useful for tanking damage and distracting enemies. They but I want hits. more heavy hitters in my army, so I'm going to unsummon some warriors and instead add skeletal arsonists. Fire. Permanent minions come with special active abilities called command skills. You can order these guys to detonate your own minions for even more damage and care of effect. <laughs> detonate them? If you want a bigger okay. army, you'll need a scepter. This new weapon type is imbued with even more spirit, allowing you to Grand summon Lowe's even more friends. Elemental minion. And if you want an even bigger army than that, you can take advantage of corpses to summon true hordes of minions. True hordes. But what can a witch do while her army is at work? Well, she has a range of chaos spells to spread disease hey, amongst your enemies, or bone them skills to impale them. Bone or, you spell. know, you could curse them to make them weaker so your horde can take them down. Debuffs. Curses. There are 25 active occult skills. By the end game, you'll be the leader of a fearsome army of the dead, consuming everything in its path. Nice. The sorceress bends the elements to her will, using them to unleash devastation on her foes. This classic spellcaster weaves a flurry of elemental nice. magic from afar. They use the same elements as Elemental month? skills have everything you might expect and more. Fireballs, icy explosions, lightning storms, you get the idea. Each spell is unique and has many different ways to build and combo with others, even between different elements. For example, Flame Wall conjures a burning line that not only damages enemies, but also oh, empowers fire all the that pass through it. Wow. If you place a wall and fire lightning sparks through it, they'll gain extra fire damage. It's a good idea Looks to take advantage of the ability to automatically swap weapons when you use certain skills. Having a special staff with bonuses to fire skills and another with bonuses to lightning skills can yeah. really power up a combo like this. The sorceress can also take advantage of powerful trigger sorceress. gems. For example, you could trigger. grab the cast and ignite gem and use it with firestorm. As you ignite enemies, a counter will go up in the top left corner. When it's full, a firestorm will automatically be cast to the enemy that was ignited. There are 25 Ooh, active nice. elemental skills. By end game, you'll be firing off projectiles left and right as you Holy rain down moly. elemental storms on your foes. <laughs> you know which one's yours? Now, those are the characters that will be available at the start of early access. But we'll be Templar adding six yet. more character classes with just as many skills and options as six these. Six more later. There's a lot more to come. There's one more important thing to mention about skills. Even though we talk about them as belong to each class, in reality, there are no restrictions. Yeah, you, you can, can switch. use all these skills on any class so long as you have the attributes. For example, a poison ranger might want to try out using occult curses to increase her poison damage. Or a yeah. monk might want to trigger elemental ice walls to use with his glacial cascade combo. The yeah, possibilities for cross-class combos are practically unlimited. 
We're looking forward to what kind of things you guys might find. Or monk now, with totems and bells. For build customization. <laughs> and we haven't even scratched the surface it? of what is possible yet. But then that's the more strength though. So let's talk about support gems. So maybe more like a deck Path oriented. Path 2 has a system of support gems that can be combined with your active skills to dramatically change the way they work. If you find a support gem, then right clicking it will open up this screen. Here you will find a variety of recommended support gems for each of your skills that you can pick between. For example, oh, so you just this pick is a now. You don't have to find a specific one. Can be used to add multiple projectiles to any skill. Normally, when you fire a grenade, it'll look like this. Multiple. But if we add multiple projectiles, then you get three of them. Once you have the yeah. gem, you can also freely move it between any of the skills in your character. If you want to have a multi-shot sniper rifle instead, then simply move the gem sniper over to your high-velocity round skill. Yeah. Generally speaking, if it sounds like a support gem should work with a skill, then it will work. So it's a good idea to experiment. Nice. Note that you can only have one of each support gem on your character, so you'll want to think carefully about oh. which supports can be used best with each skill so, for so maximum can you, damage. Can, you can use multi-shot and everything. Now, if you want to stick to the recommendations, you should have a perfectly good time. But if you want to experiment a bit more, then uncheck that recommended button and you can see the full list of supports that will work with your skill. There are Light hundreds drain. of support gems to choose from, and even we don't know the results of all the possible ways these can interact. Each because. skill can have up to five supports socketed into it. And if you're clever, you can come up with some pretty interesting ideas. Now, all yeah, of this is okay. just scratching the surface. You can make frost vortexes, break people's armor, make minions explode, make skills repeat. Make Repeating enemies set skills. each other on fire, cull enemies, or pin them to the ground. It supports that you drastically change the behavior of your skills and create your own unique build, or at least follow someone's OP build guide. So, oh, speaking of builds, let's talk oh, about yeah. one of the most iconic Path of Exile systems. The are they gonna make it, skill tree. Are they going to make it a uh, Yes, now? it's huge. It's still here? There are over 1,500 nodes <laughs> on there. Now, a lot of people open the tree and can get a little intimidated at first. But try not to be scared. There are lots of options, but at its core, it's pretty simple. Just start at one place. Each level, you get one point to put into the tree. Each class starts at a different location, but they all share the same tree. Yeah. Around your section of the tree, you'll find relevant bonuses for your character. You should be safe in the knowledge that there aren't many wrong choices here. Almost all the starting nodes will be useful for your character in some way. But if you do happen to make a choice you regret, you'll be able to respec any nodes you've taken by spending a little bit of gold. Only a little bit? Okay. It's just gold this time, and you don't need no orb. <laughs> now, hoping, the tree is right? generally divided up into clusters which have similar themes. In each cluster, you will find small nodes that give simple bonuses like increased damage, but the real power comes from notables. The big ones. Notables normally have much more interesting bonuses, and they tend to care a lot more about how your build works and what skills you're using. For example, in the mercenary area of the tree, this one gives a 25% chance for crossbow skills to not consume a bolt. And here's one that gives grenades a chance to blow up a second time. This one gives a chance for projectiles to rebound off terrain, as well as giving you some pierce chance to make that more likely. Note nice. that even though this is in the mercenary section, this would work with projectiles the from mercenary. all classes. So there are often reasons to go to different the areas ranger of the tree. or mercenary. In order to get yeah. between these clusters, you will generally have to allocate nodes in the attribute highways. Attribute nodes allow you to pick which attribute you would like to use, so it's very easy to get points for any attribute that your gear might need. You can change which attribute these nodes give you for half price at the respec vendor. In addition to notables, you will also well, you can find do it any time, but you want a cheaper keystones. Go to the keystones have both an upside and a downside, and often require changing your entire build to design around them. Mm, a great example is Giant's Blood, which allows you to wield two hand weapons in a single hand, but doubles the attribute requirements of them. You can use a two hand mace with a shield, or even dual wield them. How about dual wield core steps? Just kidding. <laughs> well, how about Mind Over Matter, which makes all damage go to your mana pool first before your life pool, but you lose 50% of your mana regen. Skills like these can be tough to build Interesting. around, but if you're up for the challenge, they can be very rewarding. Mm. You have As a Path of Exile 2 one? On Sorceress, you can swap between weapon sets on the fly as you use certain skills. One of the new features in Path of Exile 2's passive tree is that you can choose to have your passive tree oh, change as you switch you between it. weapon sets to take advantage of specific bonuses on the tree. For the sorceress, you might want to change between fire and lightning specialization. Or you could switch between one hand and a two hand setup in order to be able to block boss attacks while following up with heavy hits from your bigger mace. 
Or perhaps you could have a full curse set up on your witch to debuff enemies before switching to a Chaos Degen build for maximum damage. Not bad. If you want to stick with just one weapon set, you can just use these specialization points as bonus points to invest however you like. But creative players will find plenty of opportunities with this system. You can get weapon specialization points throughout the campaign from optional bosses and quests. For example, if I manage to defeat the Crowbell, I always I'll get a weapon though, specialization book. There are lots of other permanent boosts available from the campaign too. On the map, you can see icons that indicate the many optional encounters you can find. Some of them have permanent character boosts, and others have powerful Dirty items. Spirit. If you're having trouble getting past a boss, it might be a good idea to explore and see what you can find. For example, if you defeat Blackjaw the Remnant, you'll gain a permanent increase to fire resistance. One of the oh, most important nice. finds are spirit bonuses. You can find the first one here in the canopy in Act 1. Spirit defeat bonus. the boss in this area to acquire a permanent addition of spirit. The permanent buffs you gain from spirit are very powerful, and every yeah, class 30. will find a use for them. So make sure you hunt down these upgrades. There's one in each act. Maximum spirit. Now we haven't even talked about the most important element of character progression, items. items. That's why we're all here, right? Items in Path of Exile can be broken down into four rarity groups. Normal, magic, rare, and unique. One of the things you're going to want to do as you play through the campaign is upgrade the items you find. And you can do that with currency items. An orb of transmutation oh, will allow you to upgrade now, a normal huh? item to a magic item with one mod. You can then apply an Orb of Augmentation to add a second mod, then use a Regal Orb to add a third mod, and upgrade it to a Rare. Finally, you can use some Exalted Orbs to add more mods to your Rare to a total of six mods. Damn. But you can't One make of the things unique, we huh? think is really important is to make these <laughs> options available to use as you play. All the items that add mods are much more common than they were in Path of Exile 1, so that you can use them throughout your campaign playthrough. We nice. want you to find things on the ground that can be crafted into upgrades much more frequently. As well as making the drop rates on these items much more common, you can also get them by disenchanting unwanted gear at the magic item nice. vendor. If you disenchant magic items, you can build up to an orb of transmutation. And by disenchanting rares, you can build up to regal orbs. Another important area of crafting items in PoE2 is sockets. Some items you find will have sockets that can have Ezemite runes placed in them that add more runes. mods to the item. If I insert this glacial rune into my helmet, it will give extra cold resistance. This is a great way to solve problems that you have with your build, like resistances or damage. If you find socketed items that you don't have a use for, you can take them to the salvage bench in town to work towards an artificer's orb. This will allow you to add sockets to your existing items. Oh, wow. Body armors and two-hand weapons can have up to two sockets, while two. the rest of your armor and one-hand weapons can only have one socket. Uh, you can one. also okay. salvage items with quality to create items like armor scraps or whetstones. These will allow you to increase the quality of your items for an up to 20% boost. If you don't want to disenchant or salvage your items, you can always sell them for gold. Gold can be used to buy items from vendors, and we've tried to do a lot to make sure that the items they have for sale are actually useful. Gold you can use Every time reset you level now. up, they get more stock, so make sure to check back often. Other vendors offer a gamble. Pay a flat amount of gold and you'll get a random item of a specific type. This could be a great way to improve your gear, if you're lucky. Gold is Can also used unique? to respec your passive skills. Yeah, there you Take go. advantage yeah. of the system to experiment with your tree and rework it as required. I'm glad you don't need to get orbs to reset. The other thing you reset. might want to use gold for is the currency exchange. This allows you to exchange currency items with other players on an open market. Oh, in exchange market. for a small gold nice. fee. But it's set. Now, all items right. in Path of Exile are freely tradable. We never bind anything to your character. Except oh, really? Gold. Never mind. Oh, well, yeah, you guys need now, some most stuff. Gear I got Path it. Of XL2 is randomly generated, but there's another type that isn't. Uniques. They are especially rare, each with a handcrafted set uh. of unusual mods which can dramatically change a character's build. They're not just better rare items, they can do much stranger things that can fundamentally change your character. Corpse Wade will make any corpses you run oh. through explode into clouds of poison. The Sands of Silk is a body armor that changes your dodge roll into a blink, morphing blink. you into sand as you teleport past your foes. Damn, okay. And of course, some uniques are just pure hits of dopamine, like Quill Rain, which just turns your bow attacks into full auto by doubling your attack speed. Man, look how fast that is. Each unique is something that you can build your character around. We try to make sure that most unique items have a potential use at endgame, even if you find them early on. And as you oh, can see, nice. every single unique item comes with custom art to match. 
The last character Ascension. progression system that you can do during the campaign is Ascension. Starting in Act 2, you will come across Ascension Trials, tests that you must complete to unlock your Ascension class. We'll explain these trials soon, but first let's take a look at what Ascending can do for your character. Oh, I can, Each I mean, class has access to three well. Ascendancy classes, but at the start of Early Access, only two per class will be available. Ascendancy classes are unique What's to each monk? character class, so know. choose wisely. They can drastically affect how you build your character. Do you go evil monk or holy monk? <laughs> As a sorceress, you could become a storm weaver, a master of the elements. The Tempest Caller causes elemental storms to be summoned each time you do a critical hit with a spell. You want to crit? With Strike Twice, you can stack two copies of Shock for more damage. And going deeper into the tree, you can make all your damage types apply Shock. Make a Shock <laughs> build from any skill. Shock from anything. Alternatively, you could become a Chronomancer and command Ooh, time, time itself. She literally has the ability to stop time with Time Freeze. Not only that, but she has many other time manipulation abilities. Using Temporal Rift, she can teleport back to a previous location, resetting her life and mana back to what it was. Or with what? Time Snap, she can Damn. reset all her cooldowns and cast all her spells again. On the Warrior, you can choose between the Warbringer or the Titan. Is that class change? The Warbringer yeah. channels the might of his ancestors to gain tremendous power. Using Answered Call, you can summon ancestral spirits. This is like uh, Spirit Morse. <laughs> With Jade Heritage, you can encase your body in a protective layer that absorbs all damage until it breaks. Warcaller's Bellow allows you to explode the corpses of your enemies. And with Great Wolf's Howl, you can ignore the cooldowns of your war cries. Damn. Let all that anger out. The Titan class is all about hitting big. With Earthbreaker, Everything every slam is a huh? chance to create an aftershock. With crushing impacts, every hit becomes a crushing blow, which will allow you to stun your enemies with ease. With surprising strength, you can take advantage of stunned enemies to deal 40% more damage. As a ranger, you might choose to be a Jedi, an expert markswoman who can take down foes with style. With endless munitions, every attack gains an extra projectile. Oh, interesting. With gathering winds, she gains a small increase to movement speed with every attack. But be careful, she loses them when getting hit. With eagle eyes, she will never miss, allowing you to stop wasting all those passive points on accuracy. You get Alternatively, <laughs> you could become a Pathfinder, the master of flasks and poison. She can choose from one of several throwable concoctions, allowing her to spend her flask charges to throw explosive bottles that deal various types of damage. A bleeding concoction uh, will make Acumus. your enemies bleed, while a fulminating one can shock your enemies, allowing you to do extra damage. Contagious Contamination allows her to spread poisons between her foes, while Overwhelming Toxicity doubles the number of stacks they can be infected by. Interesting. Running Assault allows her to move much more quickly while firing, while Relentless Pursuit makes her totally immune to being slowed by enemies. The Witch can ascend into the Infernalist or the Blood Mage. As an Infernalist, be she more can summon a loyal future, Hellhound right? companion. So that's what the Hellhound sets enemies on fire, as well as taking a percentage of the damage if the Infernalist gets hit. With Pyromantic Pact, you can turn your mana into Infernal Flame. As you cast more spells, the flame builds up, and if it overflows, you'll take damage. Oh. Using yeah. Bringer of Flame, you'll want to make sure you keep the flames topped up. While your Infernal Flame is above 30%, all damage from you and your minions will ignite enemies. She can also transform into a literal demon. Wow. While in demon form, demon she form. takes an increasing amount of damage, Witch, right? but her cast speed and damage increase rapidly as well. Or so if you're a... planning on transforming into a demon, make sure you stack a lot of life recovery. Wait, this for sorcerers? She sorcerers, can also right? become a blood mage, a master of life and energy. No, this is All a witch, blood mages right? Must pay the, the one with the skills cost minions. life as well as mana. Yeah. But in exchange, every monster they kill will drop life remnants, which allow them to quickly gain back that life. With Crimson Power, she can gain large amounts of extra life, and with Vitality Siphon, she can use her spells to leech life back as well. Leech. Once you've got a significant amount you of life, you can use Gore Spike to, your to make your gem. critical hit steal incredible amounts of damage. But one of their skills will get like A leech. monk who is in tune with the elements might become oh, an go. Invoker. With Elemental Expression, the Invoker will create waves of elemental power each time he does a critical strike. With Faith as a choice, you gain meditate. the ability to meditate, heal. allowing you to double your energy shield. Double. Choose between I am the blizzard or I am the thunder to specialize in cold or lightning. And I shall rage will allow you to turn into an unbound avatar. Hey yo, avatar! 
Each time you apply a status ailment to an enemy, you gain Unbound Fury. When you have enough, transform into an avatar to deal way more damage you become than avatar more airbender. elemental ailments. <laughs> Some monks choose to reach into the darkness instead. Oh. The Acolyte of Chayula can exchange their mastery of spirit for darkness, a resource that can be utilized to both absorb and deal damage. Yakuma. The Shroud of Darkness will protect you from all damage incoming, but if you take Grasp of the Void, you will deal extra chaos damage from all the darkness you have. Their Dark Pact offers greatly increased resistances to chaos damage and can allow their mana leech to not only happen instantly, Instant. but apply to their energy shield as well. Another node yeah. you can take is Waking okay. Dream, which allows you to see into the domain of the Breach Demons. There you will see the flames of Chiyula that can be taken to gain life, mana, and damage. The yeah, I don't know which way I want to go. Do I want to go Elemental, the Avatar, or do I want to be like Chiyula? <laughs> Obsessive Rituals chaos. will give you a sorcery ward, allowing you to defend yourself against elemental hits in exchange for less defense against Maybe attacks. later they'll have a, an arm With Zealous an Inquisition, one. your enemies have a 10% chance to explode on death. The chance is doubled against demons and undead. With Judge, Jury, and Executioner, your initial hit against enemies can deal up to 30% of their life and damage, if you're lucky. This is great for hunting powerful bosses. And with Witchbane, you can break your enemy's concentration, preventing them from casting spells as often as they would usually do. You could also choose to become a Gemling Legionnaire, enhancing your abilities by embedding gems directly in your flesh. <laughs> Integrated efficiency will give Damn. you extra skill slots. Thermatological infusion gives you extra maximum resistances as you sock up more and more support gems. Adaptive capability allows you to use any color of gem without worrying about attributes while Crystalline Potential adds extra quality bonuses to every gem socketed into your character. <laughs> so those are the ascendancy yeah. classes for the start of Early Access. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is how you ascend in the first place. Ascension in Path of Exile 2 requires completion of one of the Great Trials, which you'll find as you progress through the campaign. Each one is associated with one of the major cultures of Rayclast. Located in the Vasteri Plains are the Maraketh, a culture of rich tales and brutal traditions who must do whatever it takes to survive in the desert. The highest position in Maraketh culture is a Sekima, and it is not a title given freely. All aspirants must complete the trial of the Sekimas, a grueling gauntlet that will that. test their strength, will, cunning, and patience. To enter, a warrior of the Maraketh must prove their worth by trapping the soul of a djinn in a coin, and you are no different. The what? Once you have earned your coin, it may be placed in the yeah, realm coin to begin the trial. That's so strange. In the trial of the Sekimas, each room has its own challenges to overcome. In this room, each rare monster you kill will send its blood to the chalice in the center of the room. Once the chalice is filled, think? you will be able to proceed. While fighting monsters in the trial, you will need to be very careful. Each hit will not only hurt you, but will damage your honor. The monsters honor. are well telegraphed so that you can avoid their attacks, but if you run out of honor, you will fail the trial and need to find another coin in order to try again. Damn. It is a good idea to make sure that you are well prepared before challenging the trial of the Sekimus. After each room, you will be rewarded. In this case, you have been given a key that can be used to unlock chests later in the trial. Once you have claimed your reward, you will like be a shown a map of the rest like. of the floor and may choose how you wish to proceed. Which oh, wow. challenges kind of do you like want to face like. and which rewards yeah. do you want to claim? Some rooms are more dangerous, afflicting you with debuffs that will persist for the entire trial. For example, entering this room will afflict you with spiked shell that will cause all monsters in the rest of the trial to have 50% increased life. Damn. You will want to take care if you choose such a path. There are many different though, challenges right? and rewards as you journey through the trial. Deadly traps, waves of monsters, and strange artifacts will test your honor. As you progress, you'll be able to gain boons from the djinn, which will help yeah. you on your journey. For example, the Sekima's cloak will revive you once if you die, giving you a Yo, second just shot like a roguelike like game in here. <laughs> One of the rewards you may find is sacred water, an extremely valuable and treasured resource to the djinn and the Maraketh. Trading it with the djinn will allow you to receive many benefits. You can recover honor, gain additional boons, or remove afflictions. Damn, and reduce attack. At the end of the floor, speed. you'll find a powerful boss which will truly test your limitations. In order to ascend, you will need to defeat him. 
Is that a wall? Having defeated the boss, you've earned the right to ascend. But first, the loot. The keys you have found may be used to open the various treasures in the vault at the end of the floor. Damn, okay. We only have a single bronze key, so we'll just have to open one of these small chests. If you want to open the better ones, you'll need silver or gold keys. Let's use the Altar of Ascendancy. Your first ascension will allow you to pick your class and grant you two points to use in the tree. Now, there are more, more floors and many more rewards that can be found within the Trial of the Secondus. Oh, we'll you save keep that going? for the section on the end game. For now, let's talk about the second ascendancy trial, the Trial of Chaos. In Path of Exile 2, you can choose whichever trial you like to earn your ascension. Each culture on Rayclast had their own methods to ascend. Damn. If the Trial of the Secondus is not like your that. kind of playstyle, or you're finding it too difficult, you could try another. You can gain all your ascension points from just one, or mix and match them. It's up to you. For early uh, access, we will have two trials as options, with a third trial coming later for the full release. All right. While exploring the Vile Jungle, you'll discover the Temple of Chaos. Before the Vile embraced the science of corruption, their civilization worshipped chaos. This ancient trial was once used by the Vile to test their high priests. A high priest of the Vile must show willingness to risk everything to gain power. Entry to the trial requires a token from a strange entity known only as the Trial Master. For those in which he sees potential, he shall inscribe an ultimatum. Many have attempted these trials in search of greatness. Most have perished. Will you be able to defy the odds? What? Before you begin each chamber, the Trial Master will offer you a reward and a choice. Choose one of three tribulations to affect you through the rest of the trial. These modifiers might beef up the monsters, curse the player, or add environmental hazards like turrets or traps. Oh, so you can choose how hard you want In to make it? In this case, we'll be picking shocking turrets. As you enter the room, the Trial Master will fill it with hazards to test your commitment. In this case, right. you must destroy all the monsters that fill the room while dealing with the lightning projectiles from the shocking turrets. There's no honor in this though, right? Just gotta live through all these hard stuff. <laughs> Got a repeat. After each room, you will need to make a choice. Take the rewards you have earned so far, or go double or nothing. Increase your rewards, but take on more risk. Each tribulation you add is minor on its own, but they quickly stack on top of each other and can become overwhelming. What's the weapon thing that shows on there for? There are many types of chambers in the trial. Each will test your resolve in different ways. This one simply requires you survive for a certain amount of time. Another requires you to escort the stone idol through the level as elevators full of monsters descend to attack you. Should you be able to get through the first three chambers, you will face your first boss. The order of the bosses is random, and combined with the tribulations you have selected, the fight will never feel the same. Could be After harder. defeating the boss, you may claim your rewards. Of course there are the items, but you also gain the right to ascend. If you already did the Trial of the Secondments, then you can claim two more points huh. to add to your Ascendancy class. But you get points this way, Now, right? it's possible to go too much there, deeper. There. there are too more there. bosses, rewards, and risks to take. But we'll talk more about that when we get to Endgame. So how about we talk about that now? Oh, Endgame. So far, we've only been showing you footage from the campaign. But some people would argue that the Endgame is where the game truly begins. Something that happens almost every time a new action RPG launches is people saying, there isn't enough Endgame content. Well, we want to make sure that in PoE 2, people don't feel that way. And we actually only changed our development priority for this recently. The first three acts of PoE 2 already take around 25 hours to complete if you're a new player. This is already a pretty significant campaign. On the other hand, people spend hundreds Damn. of hours in Endgame each league. We realized that finishing the rest of the campaign for early access was actually a bad idea. Instead of having acts 4 to 6 in early access, we could concentrate on Endgame and make that great. For new players, a 25-hour campaign is already a huge game with lots of content. But for existing action RPG players, what you mostly care about is all the in-game challenges to overcome. So several months ago, we switched the entire development team's focus over to making in-game content. Wait, several At months the start only? of early access, there'll be 50 mean, bosses huh? and around 400 monster types. 50? But the great thing is that the rest of the game is like 80% there. We'll be adding content to roughly double the size of the game during early access and into release. 
Now, in order to make the endgame happen at the same character level as what it would be after we added the rest of the acts, we've added a second difficulty level called Cruel, where you repeat oh, the campaign okay. with all the monsters and bosses leveled up. And of course, new rewards. You can kind of think of it as like a new game plus. Yeah, it's also a lot faster game. to get through the content the second time as your clear speed increases. That will take you to around level 65, where the end game begins. Once we add the remaining three acts, we'll be removing Cruel difficulty, so you'll progress straight from the end of Act 6 to end game. But what nice. is the end game? To explain that, I'll hand over to Mark. He can tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile 2. Well, one thing that Path of Exile is known for is having a lot of distinct endgame content to choose between. Like Each endgame mechanic the... needs to have its own progression system, areas, bosses, rewards, and player power yeah, that can only be gained from that off? content. We are going to be adding a lot more over time, but for Path of Exile 2, we decided to start with seven distinct systems you can progress through. Seven. This well. is the Atlas. And it serves as the core yeah. of the end game for Path of Exile 2. That's the scene in Path of Exile 1, right? It expands in all directions. Now, we are not going to spoil the plot too much here, but corruption from the beast has blighted the land, and your objective is to help fight it. In the center of the Atlas, you will find the Ziggurat, a temple in which the Val research the fundamentals of space and time. Here, we can open portals to nearby locations and begin cleansing corruption and finding resources. In order to power the portal device, we will need waystones. Each waystone waystones. has a tear which will determine the level of the monsters that you will face. To go to an area, simply click one that is adjacent to an area that you have already completed. Put Insert in. the waystone and click traverse. Well, you can put four of them open, though. <laughs> allowing you and your party to travel to the area you have selected. All the areas in the end game feel distinct from the locations in the campaign, and we have dialed the randomization up to 11. The I kind of want to do this. Face in each map are totally random, Maybe that's the holy one. the combination one. of them can Lightning. lead to some very interesting combat situations. There are over 400 do, 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 monster do, 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 types do, 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 in early access, and they have a lot of varied and interesting abilities. The are going to go Lightning Monk to start you face, off. You might find some serious challenges. In order to cleanse the corruption from the area, you will need to defeat all the powerful, rare, and unique enemies in it. Once you have done that, the area will be marked as completed and you will be able to travel past it to progress deeper into the world. If you die, then the map can no longer be run and you will have to find another way around to get to the areas behind it. There are also Damn. all kinds of other random encounters you might run into as you play maps. One such encounter, a precursor Can you restart, can you restart These it? These are what? ancient, corrupting monuments that irradiate the monsters around them. The monsters that feed off the corruption are drawn to their power. If you defeat the monsters and cleanse the artifact, you will get a powerful temporary buff. Some of the buffs make you faster, others rain lightning or fire around you, and some even give you increased experience or help you find better items. You can also find Magic strong fine. boxes. These enigmatic chests guard piles of treasure, but are always a trap. Monsters lie in wait to attack you the moment you open it, and the boxes often have mechanisms to unleash powerful spells or you dangerous put orb in there? What is this? There are different types of strong boxes containing different items, and you can even use your currency items to craft them on the fly, so you can optimize oh, the contents. Wow. You can, but be careful you can of opening one you can't handle. Okay, I was like, wait, you put an orb on it. Sometimes you'll discover monsters frozen in essences, solidified crystalline corruption. These dangerous monsters can be broken free. If you defeat them, the essence they drop can be used to upgrade normal items to magic items with a guaranteed mod from a category. Guaranteed mod, huh? Essence For example, of body. We could use this one on some boots Ace. to ensure a movement speed mod. Nice. Rarely, essences will also drop that allow you to upgrade magics to rares, adding the guaranteed mod. You just don't know which speed mod, right? <laughs> this is Old incredibly modifier. powerful since it allows you to get a second deterministic mod in your crafting projects. Combining these with the currencies that are commonly found at Rayclass for modifying items, and we can get a very How many nice mods do you have on there? Six? Waystones, like all items, can also be crafted using your currency items. Adding prefix mods will improve the rewards while suffix mods increase danger. The more dangerous a map Damn. is, the more waystones will drop. Adding mods to your waystones is key to progressing to higher tiers and sustaining them. 
but it will require you to take on larger challenges. There are a variety nice. of factors you have to consider when crafting your waystones. Some maps will have higher density, some I'm lower, assuming you get them during campaign or something. Chests, or monsters, some are more linear Overall. and others more open. Make sure you explore and think about what makes certain maps good if you want to maximize your returns. As you cleanse corruption from higher and higher tiers of the atlas, you will gain points that you can spend in the atlas tree. This tree allows oh, that's you to the reduce the danger and rewards of all areas in the endgame. The you could tree. increase the number of monsters, the number of rares, the number of precursor artifacts or strong boxes, even the quantity of item drops. As you explore the in-game world map, you'll notice various different biomes, from snow-capped mountains to dense jungle valleys. Most maps are restricted to certain biomes. Motion blur. As you continue <laughs> to explore deeper into the atlas, there are all sorts of things to discover. These cities are constructed by different peoples of Rayclast and have specific items that can be found there. These strange Swear, did they have a motion blur where they don't move? appear to do anything for now. Perhaps you'll work out how to use them later. You might find unique maps like Untainted Paradise, an undisturbed island full of beasts that give an extreme amount of experience. You may even find a lonely man just enjoying his retirement who will give you a unique item for free. In addition, Damn. you can find Damn special rich. areas that would make a good spot to set up camp. Clear these areas of their hostile inhabitants and you'll be able to claim them as your own hideout. You can decorate your hideout Damn. as you see fit and invite various NPCs to join you, you can there make a hideout. to create your own personal base of operations. The hell? A great tool for exploration are towers. These mysterious precursor constructs are dotted around the atlas. Completing the tower will reveal a large area around it, allowing you to scout oh, out your next okay. challenge. There are lots of things to find, so keep looking. Look at Some house. sections of your atlas are influenced by corruption. This adds extra modifiers to the maps in the region, increasing difficulty and rewards. Here, slaying monsters in close proximity to each other will cause the vestiges of corruption within them to merge together, forming powerful merge. and grotesque abominations. God you damn. may have noticed while looking at the atlas that some of the areas have these icons above them. The icon indicates that the area contains some kind of special encounter. This icon indicates that the area has a powerful boss. Because only one in four maps contain a map boss, we are able to make them very powerful and very rewarding. These bosses come from the campaign, but have had their difficulty increased with changes to AI and some of their abilities. It's worth noting that because you can see where the bosses are, you can choose to take them on or avoid them. If you do choose to hunt bosses though, then you will be rewarded with special points for the boss hunting section of the Atlas skill tree. The Damn. points here will allow you There's to specialize in boss version. killing, giving you much greater rewards for defeating them. And you do it in a party, For which is great. For each different type of content in the end game, we are adding specialized trees in order to make it so you don't feel the need to respec your points when you change between different types of content. We will be nice. showing you seven of these by the end of this presentation, so there is still a lot more to Damn. come. Bosses are not the only icon you will see on the Atlas. Let's take a look at one of the end game systems, Breach. If you played PoE 1, you Breach. might be familiar with Breach. For PoE 2, we have created sequels to several PoE 1 leagues. While the mechanic is familiar, the monsters, bosses, rewards, and progression are all new. A Breach is a tear in the fabric of reality. Opening it will allow Change you to see it. the demons and otherworldly monstrosities that lie in wait on this other plane of existence. By engaging with a Breach, you'll create a bridge between their world Keep and drawing. Rainforest. In order to keep the breach open, you will need to kill the demons that pour forth. The faster you can kill the monsters, the more monsters you will fight, and the more loot you will find. Oh, you can also find clasped hands that will open and drop more items if you run over them. These can be a good boost to the Clap rewards hand. of the breach, so keep an eye on them. Breach ring. One of the rewards that you may find while fighting monsters from breach are tablets. Tablets are special items that can be used with precursor towers to add more encounters to the atlas. Breaches will drop breach tablets. Clicking Damn. on a completed tower will allow you to consume the tablet to add Change more breaches to areas within range of the tower. This makes all the content in the atlas self-sustaining. Want to do more breaches? Find the tablets, add them to your towers, get more breaches, getting more tablets. Soon your atlas will be covered in otherworldly domains. In addition, <laughs> like all items in PoE, you can craft them. Use your currency to add mods to your tablets, Jeez. allowing you to upgrade all the breaches in range. Tablets Jeez. can have up to two mods. 
These mods do things like adding extra rare monsters, extra clasped hands, or <laughs> even monster ESD. density of breaches, allowing you to keep them open longer. Often, you will find multiple towers near to each other with overlapping areas of effect. Oh, this man. can allow you to rarely juice the mechanic by stacking the mods from multiple tablets. You have to be strong enough first. In your fight to hold the breach demons at bay, you may want to use the powers of their world against them. Each in-game mechanic always has player power that can only be gained from that mechanic, and breach is no different. The in breach, you will find catalysts, oh, catalysts, items that can increase the quality of rings and amulets by improving specific mods. You can also find Breach Rings, a special base type that can have its can quality approved by them? catalysts up to 50%. Yeah, this In this case, out you too. could create a ring with around 170 They're talking about life. the stuff coming Breach out. Breach Rings can become some of the strongest <laughs> rings in the game, giving you some good motivation to face the demon hordes. In addition, each endgame mechanic needs to have a pinnacle endgame yeah, encounter. While killing Breach monsters, you may find Breach Splinters. Collect enough of breach these Spender. and you'll be able to create a Breach Stone. Using a vile technology called the Realm Gate, you can use your Breachstone to access Echo's their domain fun. and bring the fight. Have you to started an encounter already? In this twisted domain, I haven't made an encounter find nothing anything. but a single massive breach. Triggering it will reveal hordes of breach. I wonder if I should still play or not with these games coming out. I still couldn't get my account to get a good account that I wanted. And should you be fast enough, you will be able to fight their leader, Zesht. We that are one. We that dreamed. We I'm so behind though if I start. Oh, the one with the hands that you get from Shish Drops. Yeah, he's finger flicking you. Confirmation. You got all our units. This is just nice. One of the pinnacle encounters of POE2. We won't be showing the rest of them, so you will have to discover them tonight. For I think uh, sure, Spring Nova is dropping too. All these encounters have specific units. This is a first-person shooter. Them, but that's not all. We gotcha. still have the progression system. Defeating right, Zest will give you points to allocate into the breach section of the Atlas Tree. Breach. Allocating these points will make breaches and the breach domain even harder, but will give you more rewards. The small nodes will increase the difficulty of the twisted domain, while the large nodes have more specific bonuses. For example, Great. this node adds more class points to your breaches and adds a pack of magic monsters. Isn't Marvel that Rival the Get some more points and you can allocate Pretty much Overwatch, nine, right? which will double the number of splinters you get from class hands. I'm into the quality of the stream. Mysterious debuff. In order to earn more points, you will need okay. to defeat Zesht at a higher difficulty, and some rewards from Zesht can only be found by increasing the difficulty of the Twisted Domain above certain thresholds. Defeating Zesht at difficulty 4 will be a challenge indeed. Oh, but damn. there are many more threats and breakers. Ritual altars are sacrificial sites built by the mysterious King in the Mists. If you encounter this symbol on the Atlas, then you know that the area contains ritual altars. Ritual, ritual altars. altars demand tribute. Every monster you slaughter in the circle will feed the altar. After the sacrifice, touch it to begin the ritual. The monsters you just killed will be resurrected by the King of the Mist's dark magic, and you must fight to survive. Damn, you gotta fight dark. <laughs> you gotta fight them twice. The tribute you have offered to the altar can be spent to buy powerful items, but they can be expensive. Some of them. Yeah. To gain more tribute, you will want to find more altars. Each successive ritual you do within an area will spawn the monsters revived by the previous ones, in addition yeah, to the okay. ones you sacrifice next to it. By the end of an area, you'll be fighting a truly imposing number of foes, but will have a significant amount of tribute to spend. One of the rewards you can buy with tribute are omens. These are special items omens. that allow for metacrafting. Crafting items that affect other crafting items. Have an item with you can have a hideout. You can make your own hideout in this game. This omen will help you yeah. to remove the mod you don't want while keeping the ones you do. There are a bunch more of these with different effects, but we will leave them for you to discover. Now, don't forget that Ritual will also drop tablets, which can be used to specialize into getting more rituals. If you want to get to the pinnacle boss of Ritual, then you will probably want to use them. They can also be crafted to grant mods. Can you take them out and put new ones in? Rewarding. The pinnacle encounter of Ritual is the King in the Mists. Feared Maybe I'll start rerolling echoes off stream and get my account and start playing. Darkness to the Wildwood. 
We won't show the encounter, but just like Breach, there are a range of unique items you can get for defeating him, and you will gain points in the ritual section of the Atlas Tree. Some maps have been touched by insanity. A mysterious Delirium. entity has taken a special interest in you. Step through the looking glass and you will this find your nightmares accent, coming man. to life. Holy moly. When you touch a mirror, the mists of delirium will spread out across the area, infecting your mind. You must stay within the mist to maintain the nightmare, which is as profitable as it is terrifying. Everything you kill will increase the rewards that drop. However, the deeper into the mist you travel, I like the stronger you, I really the like monsters teleport. are. Be careful not to overstay your welcome. Rare and unique enemies will become vessels for terrifying demons who will manifest echoes. out of them to unleash powerful attacks on you. The mist also offers a strange crafting material. Maybe I'll just reroll again until I get more and By more cryos and emotions, play with it. You are able to instill your amulet with a notable from the passive skill tree. This is like gaining an extra passive point for free attached to your gear. They are also particularly great too. because you don't have to traverse the tree to get them, allowing you to get off-class bonuses that would normally be much harder to get. Oh, you can just get one. Distilled emotions can also be used to instill your in-game maps, applying delirious to them and adding additional difficulty and rewards, allowing you to further juice your in-game. Yeah, just select that thirty. The tablets you can find one. from Delirium can be used to further improve it, increase pack size, make the fog dissipate slower, or improve your progress towards the pinnacle encounter of Delirium. Get a tablet Speaking too. of which. Every now and then you will find simulacrum splinters. The mysterious entity will create strange encounters based on warped versions of your own memories. memories. Monsters and simulacrums come so, in waves uh, that campaign? get progressively more difficult. You will receive loot at the end of each wave and you will have to make the decision to yeah, leave punch now him. Punch or continue him. on, facing up against even tougher foes from the mist. The bosses you will face as you get deeper into a simulacrum are truly terrifying. You know, if you can complete you the simulacrum, you will gain points for the delirium section of oh, the, the ice skill tree. Expedition. Next up, we have Expedition. Maybe like Moss Hunter? Occasionally, while clearing corruption, you will encounter these Kalgurin settlers. The Kalgurins have discovered ancient burial sites with lost Verisium artifacts, and they want you to help dig them up with explosives. The Kalgurans have marked the locations where the relics can be found. Place explosives as best you can to dig up as many as possible. There <laughs> is just one problem. Corruption has brought the corpses of their ancestors to life, so you might have to do a little cleanup before you can reclaim the artifacts. Oh man. You can also find remnants. The destruction of which will further anger the restless dead. Each one you blow up will make the subsequent monsters more powerful, but also more rewarding. Danik, Reminence. Rog, Tujin, and Gwenin will exchange the artifacts for useful items and runic magic. You can also find tablets to increase the number of expeditions and the rewards. Hey, tab in everything. This on one this. increases the radius of explosives, while this one increases the number of remnants you will find. Holy moly, a lot of content. Eventually, you <laughs> might discover a logbook. Yeah. These are special maps full of buried treasure and relics. Essentially, one giant dig site. Here, you can create an extremely long chain of explosives and go through a very <laughs> high number of remnants. But be Damn. careful. Many remnants have mods that can rarely break your build, so you will probably want to avoid these ones. If you add too many remnants, you could easily make the encounter harder than you can handle. There are all sorts of interesting things buried under the ground in logbooks. You might find dripping caves and hidden pirate caches. But the most powerful encounter is Ulroth, the ancient undead commander of the Knights of the Sun. Defeating him will grant you unique rewards, as well as points to spend Damn. in the expedition section of the Atlas tree. <laughs> So those are the in-game systems on the Atlas, but we are not done yet. The There's trials the we Atlas. talked about earlier have much more content when you get to in-game too. Just like the other in-game systems, they also have progression mechanics, unique rewards, and player power that can only be gained from them. As you get higher level coins for the trial of the Sycamores, you will unlock more floors to explore. Each floor has its Jeez. own challenging rooms and a floor boss traps. that you will need to kill. There are four floors in total, leading to another pinnacle boss at the end of the last floor, which can only be accessed at endgame. The trial of oh, the yeah, Sycamores is where you'll find jewels, which you can socket into your tree. These are like passives that you can craft Wait, with your you currency sock items. Into your tree. They can be really powerful as they allow you to stack modifiers that may not be easily accessible on the tree normally. This jewel gives lightning hell? damage and shock chance, for example. 
There are quite a few jewel sockets on the tree, oh, so I it's see. possible to gain a lot of power here. There are also the other types of jewels that don't provide any bonuses themselves, but affect other passives surrounding them. This jewel increases the effect of small nodes and radius by 25%. With careful placement in the tree, you could get a significant amount of Holy power moly. from it. There are also unique jewels available with very interesting effects, but interesting. you will have to find those for yourself. In order to push further into the trial and uncover the secrets of the Marraketh, you will want to take advantage of its progression system, relics. relics. Relics are items that can be placed in the relic altar as you start the trial. They give special bonuses that affect the trial, making it easier and increasing its rewards. Of course, nice. you can craft these with your currency <laughs> items, making them even stronger. Yeah, yeah. If you Curse can complete the entire crafting, trial yeah. overcoming all four floors, the final boss will reward you with one of many unique relics. These relics will be consumed when used on your next run, but can reward you with unique and powerful items. For example, this is nice. the Last Flame. If you use it, you will have only one honor for the entire trial. So you one. will need to do a completely <laughs> hitless run. <laughs> you get you dead. Oh. The Trial of Chaos also extends into the endgame. As you gain inscribed ultimatums of higher and higher levels, the number of chambers that you can go through increases. In true Val style, this allows Jeez. you to take even more risks for even more rewards. At endgame, you can progress through up to 10 I don't chambers like hitless runs, three though. bosses on a single run. <laughs> Stacking 10 tribulations on top of each other will make this a significant challenge, but it's worth it. The Trial Master will tempt you with items of the Val Empire, such as Val Orbs. Vile orbs are powerful crafting items that corrupt your gear with random, mysterious outcomes. Corruption prevents an item from being modified further, so it Damn. has to be the last step of your craft. But it's also the most impactful one. For example, if you use one on your body armor, it might add a new powerful enchantment, or it might re-roll up to half of its modifiers. Vile <laughs> orbs also have the ability to add a socket, allowing you to bypass the Whoa. normal restriction of how many sockets an item can Damn, have. You can a body armor can get up to three sockets this way, allowing for a significant number of So maybe it's better to run rares, right? Vile uniques orbs can only, even only modify one uniques. Adding enchantments or sockets to uniques can make them incredibly powerful, but there is a good <laughs> chance that you will break them as well. The Trial oh God, Master will them. also occasionally offer you soul cores. Originally formed by Chaos, the Val sought to replicate soul cores through Crazy. human sacrifice Freaky rituals uniques. and blood magic to power their civilization. Soul cores are powerful socketable Thank items you. with mods that can be obtained from regular runes. I remember my teacher telling me that when I was, uh, like he was saying that Val makes, of course makes her want to teach boss. more. <laughs> the final chamber will drop keys to this mysterious door. Some say this is where the Trial Master himself resides. Perhaps you are willing to take the risk to find out. Had enough yet? Pinnacle because there's still just one more thing. The most difficult content in Path of Exile 2. While mapping, oh, you might come across this fortress that has emerged from underground, I'll, I'll surrounded by an enormous maze riddled with Because I have a script, right? Is so I the maze let it run preventing something from getting in or something getting out? This fortress is of ancient origin and its construction has similarities to the towers and tablets that you have been using on your journey through the endgame. It is clear from the entrance that there are three keys required to enter. Local factions are vying for access to the fortress in order to seize the Damn. power they believe will be inside. Each of the faction's leaders have managed to get their hands on one of the keys, so you will need to defeat them. Each faction is led by an uber yeah, boss. Nice. You can see one of them inhabiting the city, but in order to fight him, you will first need to defeat their two lieutenants in the adjacent lieutenants. zone. Be careful. If you fail against either of the lieutenants, you're doing it manually, though, leader, right? That's why. On, and you will need to find them again. Kill all the I, uber bosses, and you will gain access the to the fortress. For it we player. aren't going to spoil it, as we can't wait to see you guys attempt it for the you're first time. But is there a tree you get points in after killing it? Of course there is. This is tree. Path of Exile. There is always another tree. So these are your challenges for PoE2. Always a tree. <laughs> As you can see, this project is crazy huge. Way bigger than even we expected. I know, I didn't own your access too. It's more to add access. Well, during early access, you'll need a key to get in. To yep. thank our existing PoE supporters who have spent more than 480 US dollars, we'll be giving you guys a key for the PC version for free. Anyone else who wants one can get one by purchasing one of the new early access supporter packs that have just yeah. been released to the store. Wait, right now? If you just want early access to PoE 2, then you can get a key in the 30 US dollar early access pack. The pack also comes with $30 it, of points right to spend in the MTX store. But we also have a variety of other supporter packs filled with exclusive microtransactions, points to spend in the store, and even physical items. 
The cosmetics can be used right now in Peewee 1 and in Path of Exile 2 in early Hold access right now. Most of this footage has been recorded in Path of Exile 1, since that's where you can use them immediately. The Lord of Ogham supporter pack contains a cosmetic armor set befitting of the Count of Ogham himself. There is also a matching Lord back of Ogham. which has an alternate variant depicting the influence of corruption. For Ogham. Also in this pack, you can find King. a portal formed of the rusted armor of the fallen soldiers in the Red Veil of Ogham. And the offspring of a vicious yeah, you get a portal found on the hunting grounds. This one doesn't look so vicious, though. King of whatever hundred. On top of that, you'll receive the iron one sixty and shipping. To apply to your one-handed or two-handed sword. Get a T-shirt and everything. For those you get physical who want to decorate your hideouts with fond memories and tales of Path of Exile's history, Warlord. you will also get a series of hideout statues. This Damn, pack these support the go crazy. Pillar. For Path of Exile One's so closed beta. Each pack contained a true New Zealand icon, the Kiwi. Following this tradition, all packs in the series will also contain a new themed Kiwi pet. The pet will loyally follow you into battle, but run away at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> Become the ruler of the desert with the king of the Faradun supporter pack. Yeah. Show your mastery of traversing the sands of the Vasteri Plains. The body armor will allow you to glide <laughs> along the ground with ancient sand magic. Now each armor set comes with body armor, boots, so weird, gloves, though. and helmet, but the boots are covered in sand. If you'd prefer to show them off, you can turn the gliding off if you want. Uh. The accompanying back attachment equips you with two powerful pillars that can control and manipulate lightning. They will periodically release their energy in a powerful blast while in town, and hover in a circle around you, Only in town, though. between them yeah. forming a barrier of energy. Replace the appearance of any bow with the Faradun's glory skin. What the or hell? Replace the appearance of a spear with yeah, the hands for legs. spear <laughs> skin. This spear or, skin can be applied to staves and oh, no, staves a hand on your, cape, XL1. your belt. If you want to truly show your worth as a king of the Faradun, then you definitely need your trusty moving entire city fortress known as the Dreadnought to travel the? across the Vasteri Plains. In Path of Exile, you can decorate your hideout however you like. And it's Yo, no you can make this your hideout. It comes with a variety of thematic elements to use, or use decorations from elsewhere in the game. Additionally, you will get the Deshret's Blessing Level Up effect. Mmm, that looks cool. The King of the Faradun Kiwi Pet. And last but not least, a statue depicting the Vile Oversoul from Path of Exile 1. For those who don't know how supporter packs work, each pack comes with all of the cosmetics from the previous tier. So you'll get all the items from the Lord of Ogham supporter pack as well. Damn. The Thaumaturge of the Val supporter pack features an armor set and back attachment themed around the Val and their pursuit of cooler. science and progress. Yeah, it gets cooler and cooler as time goes. You can find the soul core weapon down. effect in this pack, which causes thaumaturgic energy harnessed from sacrifice to spill from your weapon. This pack also contains Doyani's idol. It replaces the default appearance of any foci to an ancient relic once used by Doyani. And this can be applied to shields in Path of Exile 1. That's not the only Vile weapon you'll find. It also contains the Wand of the Thaumaturge skin. And the Royal Sacrifice Dagger skin. You wouldn't think to put sacrificial gems on a Kiwi, but the Vile did. Thaumaturge of the Vile that, supporters that will receive the too? Thaumaturge of the Vile Kiwi pet. And the Statue of Dominus. This is also the first pack in the series with a physical item. When purchasing this pack, you'll receive a Path of Exile 2 logo t-shirt. But if you don't want one, you can opt out and return for additional points to spend in the store. Becoming a Warlord of the Karui supporter will grant you an armor set and back attachment adorned with jade carvings and oh, they have it on, they have it on Steam too. power. Enough to even buy it on Steam. the ancestral gods, specifically Tukuhama, the Karui god of war. Oh, my bad. Overkill, you say? I think the Karui people would disagree. Why not drop a gigantic totem on rare enemies you slay to crush them to a pulp? Replace your nice. crafting bench in your hideout with the Ancestral Canoe Crafting Bench, where Ancestral Chief Mata will summon a giant canoe manned by Karui warriors <laughs> to aid in your crafting desires. This for crafting. Crafting animation. You'll also get a pair of weapon skins. I swear to, I don't want to look better than this. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about or two -handed this axes, looking <laughs> Or Tukohama's Crusher to your one-handed or two-handed maces. A true Karui warlord is always accompanied by their trusty Kiwi. Equipped with armor and harnessing ancestral magic. Jeez, the, the Kiwi looks the best, though. 
Once one of the most feared beings in Rayclast, Malachi was slain by a powerful exile. Get May the trophy. statue commemorate the virtue of exile's past, present, and of the future. Of course, it's not all about dressing up in game. You'll want to look good in real life too. By yeah, becoming hey. a warlord of the Kurui supporter, you'll also get a Path of Exile 2 hoodie. Our final tier of supporter pack in this series is the Liberator of Rayclast supporter pack. The Liberator of Rayclast armor set and back attachment come made with the finest materials in Rayclast and shattered glass mosaics suspended in divine power. I guess I didn't buy it on Set Steam. up your base of operations in the Beacon of Salvation hideout. Why restrict yourself to just one island when you can liberate more? The Beacon of Salvation hideout comes equipped with your own collection of small islands and personal operators. Damn, and you get a whole I you, you get multiple islands. Just walk to the piers, click a boat to enter, and navigate as you choose. Decorate each island as you see fit to best represent your well earned hideout. And have your friends come over. Everyone in your hideout can use their own boat. Why not have some races? You can also get the window to twilight portal effect. Oh, a beautiful mosaic cool. piece of art that shatters and reveals a gateway to your desired destination as you approach it. The whale item, guys. As you walk away, <laughs> the, the glass items. magically reforms back to its original form. Rule and style with the Throne of the Ruler map device. Sure, this map device can create portals to in-game maps, but it also comes with a throne you can sit on to oversee wow, your Wow, you kingdom. get a throne. You get a... Look you get a... the plebeians running your maps. Is that a female statue? Being the Liberator, though, is not just about sitting on your throne all day. If you do decide to join the fight yourself, you can leave a High Priest in charge as your second in command. Wow. Liberator of Rayclass supporters will also get a set of varied weapon skins. The Light of Divinity Scepter skin. The Deliverance Crossbow skin. The Justice Flail skin. All skins, and the Redemption man. Shield skin. Damn. Once again, you have the Copy and Key. <laughs> and of course, a statue depicting one of the most iconic events in Rayclast's history. Nah, I like the, the other, I like the other Kiwi better. And Kitava, the insatiable. With the help of two deities, Sin and But Innocence, the portals the and stuff, oh my god, the best one. <laughs> this supporter pack also contains the Path of Exile 2 art book. This 215-page full-color art book includes a huge amount of amazing concept art and lore produced during the long and exciting journey of Path of Exile 2's development. Nice. And finally, Path of Exile has a tradition of letting the community participate in designing game features. For Path of Exile 2, we'll be adding the Twilight Order Foil Reliquary. What the hell? By becoming a Liberator of Rayclass supporter, once Path of Exile 2 is released, you will be able to select any unique item you have found and be able to drop it from the Reliquary. Once players have submitted their items, keys to the Reliquary will start dropping, and other players will be able to find foil versions of uniques that you have submitted, along with a message for the lucky player. The more players submit the same unique, the more chances there will be for the Reliquary oh, to drop them. So choose wisely. RNG chance. <laughs> now almost all of these items are available to use in POE 1 right now. There are a few exceptions where the item class clearly doesn't exist, such as crossbows or flails. And there are also a few microtransactions on weapon types that are unavailable in POE 2 at the start of early access. Once classes that use those weapon types are added, those microtransactions will be available to use. If you can't decide nice. which supporter pack to choose yet, you can always start with the early access supporter pack that just includes a key and some points to spend in the store. Then you can upgrade to any of the following tiers at a later date. Nice. These supporter packs will be available for purchase throughout early access. I'll see We'd how really I feel. like to thank you for your ongoing support. Without you guys, Path of Exile 2 could not have happened.